Hello and welcome to the 2019 FIA Certified Gran Turismo Championships. It's the top 16 superstars and our focus for this event is the North America region and the Nations Cup race that is going to be coming up for you very, very shortly. My name is Tom Brooks. Alongside me, Jimmy Broadbent. Jimmy, it's great to be back and I'm so excited for this one for round eight of the season and what a hotly contested championship it has been so far. Yeah, we've always seen fantastic racing in the Americas region, now only the North Americas region, they've been cut off from the South America, which means, luckily for these guys, no more Igor Fraga to contend <laughs> with. Um, but nonetheless, these guys are very talented, and I'm looking forward to the show they're going to put on for us today. Yeah, it's going to be absolutely thrilling, I am sure. Here are the points rankings, though, in the top 16 superstars as we go into this event. This is after the seven rounds that we have had so far. You can see the Canadian Turismo Def Sun leading the way by uh, commanding nearly 200 points, 197 points advantage. He he has over Carl Lamb there in second position. Things get a little bit closer, though, if you look from third position down. Turismo Geordi in third place. He's just one point now ahead of FT Ant. So very much all to play for as you look further down in the lower half there of the top ten. Yeah, some very uh, memorable names. A lot of those guys in the regional finals last year. They're, those are our top eight We'll go down to our 9th to 16th. Here they are on your screen right now. A familiar name for me, Turismo Lester, down in 10th position right now. He'll be looking to try and improve a little bit with Gumball CGT down there as well. And of course, let's look at the the point standings up here. You see, it's very it's, it's just tight down here as well, Tom. The points are very close. Yeah, absolutely. Could be very much all to play for, as you say there, Jimmy. And if you look at the likes of Turismo Leicester, you know, you can see that he missed the first round. So he's very much making up kind of for lost ground more than anything uh, there in 10th position. And he has actually got a pretty good chance of making some good progress here this afternoon to see how he uh, gets on. So let's have a look then at the circuit we're going to be racing at. It's this one, the Autopolis International Racing Course. 4.6 kilometres. It's based over in Japan. Japan. It was actually built originally as a Formula One venue. Unfortunately, that was just at the same time that the uh, Japanese economy crashed in the mid-90s and it never came to be. But it is a circuit that is absolutely fantastic in various different ways. It's tight, it's technical, it's fast and flowing in other different sectors and uh, it is going to be very, very much fun indeed. So qualifying then is about to get underway. The drivers out on track for the Nations Cup, the North America region for round eight of the top 16 superstars. You can see here Turismo Leicester is leading the way at the moment. He is going to be the first driver to start his first representative lap time here there, Jimmy. Lots of drivers in the Honda NSX machines, Group 2 machines for these drivers to be uh, competing in as well. Just the one Nissan GTR out of the other remaining 15 competitors. Yeah, the NSX, uh, a bit like the uh, European region, seems to be very popular. The car of choice round here. At or top list. We've got a couple of times coming already. Uh, right now it's Turismo Leicester who is on that provisional pole on a 134.3, so a very quick time there. We have seen times uh, from other regions around down to the 33s, and there is a 33 coming in, a 33, just a 33.7 there for Car Lamb, so he'll be very happy with that provisional result. And of course, now the drivers, what they'll do at the moment is go around, try and burn off a little bit of fuel and then have another go after they bolt on a new set of tyres. Time's coming in thick and fast and uh, looking fairly good so far for the uh, our, some of our Canadian drivers, both Trismo Desta and Trismo Desta, second and third right now. Yep, they're just looking at Rory True in the uh, Nissan GTR. Actually, one of two GTRs on the grid, I apologise. We've got Turismo Windfire, who's in a GTR. He's currently in fourth position at the moment. And then uh, also Rory True there as well. Here is Hendrix 323, just coming out into the final sector of the lap. Not on a fast lap so far, just winding himself up to set a first representative lap. So you can see him there burning off the fuel. We saw this actually in the European region, Jimmy, as well, where he's riding the brakes and the throttle at the same time, just to try and get that fuel load down and get that car as light as possible in the final stages. Yeah, interesting strategy. I think what I would like to see is the option to take fuel out of the car before you go out. It kind of saves this, uh, this routine of going around having to hold the brake and get things underway a bit quicker, but we won't go into that too much uh, right now. So here is uh, Carl Lamb. He's our uh, current uh, provisional pulse sitter. Not by much, though, just by over a tenth, just under a tenth of a second, sorry, from Fismo Death Sun. And you see uh, very nice there getting out of the way of the competitors that are on a fast lap. So Mr. Stinky Bug right now, hilarious name by the way, he's coming for another set of tyres. And the idea is, if you maybe you're new to this, wondering why are these guys just going around slowly and uh, coming in for sets of tyres, is to try and burn off as much fuel as possible. And then once your car is as light as you can make it in the allotted time we have for the qualifying, which is 10 minutes, you come in, 
get a set of soft tyres, a fresh set of rubber, and go out for that one last attempt at getting a decent lap time. Yeah, all these drivers starting on soft tyres. It'll be the soft and the medium compound that's available to them in the race. And strategy is going to be very important as we go into this one there as well. More on that a little bit later on. Carl Lambo still trying to burn off that fuel, as you can see, not setting fastest lap times. Road Beef, meanwhile, has gone up into ninth position in this session there so far. You can see an absolute scattering of cars coming down towards that first corner. Lots of traffic, really, considering the track is so big in terms of it being 4.6 kilometres long. There's a lot of cars in a very confined space, and that there, AS, AMS Marzan, is not going to be helping matters either. Slight slip and a spin for him into the barrier and he is going to want to try and get himself righted and back in contention to a good lap in qualifying with just a few minutes left of this session. The difficulty we're having here is a lot of drivers, are, as you've seen, going around and trying to burn off fuel, which is just adding to the kind of mobile chicane aspect that happens when you're on a flying lap. Anyway, we're on board now with FT Ads. So let's talk you through a little bit of a lap here with FT and Very quick drivers at the World Finals and was at Paris as well, coming through the first sector. Very aggressive through here, using the downforce that these Group 2 cars have to offer. Then you go hard on the brakes, hug the inside kerb here, aim for the kerb on exit, back on the power softly. But you see a little bit of oversteer there on exit, a little bit impatient with the right foot. These guys do not run tracks control because it is quicker for them not to do so. Now out to the outside, car off to the left there, that's calm, so he's not having a good day. Um, now up to the hairpin, you're breaking uphill here, so you can break quite late. And then the, the, the corner kind of falls away from you to the right here. Very easy to understeer if you're not careful. And just pass those little penalty marker boards there. Now we're coming down to these two very fast right hands. We've got lap traffic ahead. Will they see us? Hopefully they will. Uh, they do. They pull off the racing line just about. And now up to the last sector. Very complicated through here. It's all about patience. Another a slow car ahead of us. Being very, very patient with the right foot is FT and especially out of this last right hander. And now we come in flat left into this horrible, for me a horrible last corner, it goes on forever the front left tyre takes an absolute beating through here, and then wait till you see your apex, there it is, get hard on the power cut as much of that curve as possible, drive to the line let's see what time this is going to be for FD Yang. he goes provisional power, 33.7, I think we chose the right person to follow, didn't we Tom? Absolutely right there, credits to the director because that was an absolutely fantastic uh, lap and a great commentary from yourself there Jimmy as well, so FD Yang goes to the top of the time sheets, lots of drivers have been into the pits and are now coming out they're going to be going pretty slowly around here as well and the thing is you don't want to be going too slowly like you're driving around town with gangsters paradise blasting out the window you want to be getting yourself nice and calm and uh, setting those relatively uh, good representative sort of warm-up laps you want to make sure you've got temperature in the tires you want to make sure you've got temperature in the brakes before you're setting those fast flying laps there's going to be nothing worse than going down towards that first corner with cold tires even colder brakes and setting it straight to the scene of the accident I'm now picturing you driving around town with <laughs> that basket in the window top. It's a very <laughs> interesting picture. Um, anyway, here is Tarif uh, Trismo, Def Sun. Someone we've seen do very well um, over the last few races. I, uh, like a lot of people, I follow the uh, Gran Trismo Twitter and uh, they'll post up results of uh, uh, recent races. And I've, I've seen him do very well over the course of the last few rounds. So he's looking, obviously, to uh, keep that going if he can. Coming up now to the hairpin himself. We get a great view of just elevation change as you come down here. You kind of go over a bit of a hump there, a bit like a camel almost, but then all oh, down the hill he goes into the wall. So I think he gave up on that mid corner. He kind of went, nah, I'm on camera now. I don't do that for free. Well, he's oh, gonna... There you go. He's, he's come back again. There you go. The one disguise of online gaming, but he's still going strong. But saying that, he was then impeded massively by the car in front. So that's a slap over anyway. Yeah, absolutely right. Yellow flag being waved there in the final sector as well. FTN goes into the pit lane then. So he's coming in for his final. I want to say splash and dash, but he won't be taking any fuel on board. It'll just be a new set of rubber on his car. What about Car Lamb there here as well then? Let's keep an eye. These sectors, of course, uh, aren't really representative of what he's been setting so far. This time won't be representative because he's been warming himself up, psyching himself up for a final flying lap in this session. Through the final corner he goes, that yellow flag there still waving. Over the line comes Car Lamb to start his final flying lap in this session. And look at the cars in front there as well. Some are going to be on fast laps, some are going to be cruising around. And as I said earlier on, you don't want to be cruising around too slowly. This is going to be final flying lap time there, so let's keep an eye out. Car Lamb there getting very squirrely coming out of the 
final corner. There's no two ways about it, so he is going to have to be a little bit careful there that he's not dropped too much time in this first sector. He has, he's up, he's a tenth up right now, and someone's going even faster than him, Mr. Trismo Defson, who is behind him on track now. Hopefully these guys will all have a clear run to the line. The last thing you want to do when you're flying lap is ca uh, catch someone in front who's going a bit slower than you are. Again, Defson very sideways out there in exit, but still planting the throttle. This thing rips up and goes. Lots of downforce in this thing. Imagine essentially a touring car on steroids, and that's what a Group 2 car is. Fantastic machines to drive and lots of fun. Coming up now to the middle sector. What's the split looking like? Two temps up is Turismo Defson right now. I tell you what, Gumball GTC has just jumped himself from the lower half of the top ten into fourth place as well that's a brilliant lap from the american driver turismo defson though he's still very 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 much on the ragged edge as he comes through the right and then into this final part of the lap this is where it could be won or lost for turismo defson let's have a look at the sector times what's he going to be doing he was a 30.5 he was fastest overall in that second sector but is he going to have lost any time in this third sector is it going to be a provisional pole position is it going to be pole position for turismo defson cars in front of him carl lamb and ftn they're going to be vying for pole position as well originals 14 goes inside the top 10 and turismo windfire also making his way up into seventh position over the line we go ftn carl lamb here comes turismo defson is it pole yes it is by two tenths of a second turismo defson takes pole position here in the top 16 superstars and turismo leicester as well with an absolutely brilliant Brilliant lap right at the very end of that session. He qualifies on the second row of the grid. So a great qualifying session for the two Canadian drivers. They split the two Americans on the first and second rows of the grid. But that is going to be a very, very interesting time going down towards that first corner for the first time of asking. And we spoke about it in the uh, European broadcast, Jimmy, earlier on. And we were talking about how crucial it is to get those lap times at the end of the session and how the pressure that these drivers put themselves under can either be a help or a hindrance. And it certainly proved to be a bit of a help for Turismo Defson. It did there. And uh, I, I think Lamb will be disappointed with that. He was actually up on the FT Ant's time in the first sector, but it kind of just fell away from him at the end of the lap. But yes, uh, Defson on pole, not by much. Again, just over a tenth. Just go show the strength of the field in here. We never really see one driver run away with it. It's always by a tenth here or a tenth there. Um, but as we said earlier on, of course, it is about qualifying around here. These guys are very fast indeed. And you see all the way down to tenth is when we first get away from a second. The first nine cars separated by only six tenths of a second. Incredible stuff, isn't it? That is going to be a very, very tantalising race indeed for the Nations Cup in the North America's region. Speaking of the race, then let's have a little bit of a look at the strategies that the guys could be getting into and a bit of a race details as well. You can see 11 laps at this Autopolis circuit. Racing medium and soft tyres available for these drivers. Three times tyre uh, three times fuel consumption rather and four, uh, nine times tyre wear. So tyre is going to be a very crucial factor at the end of this one. And in terms of the strategy as well there, Jimmy, that is going to make things even more interesting. We have it on our screen here now. Racing soft tyres, a six lap duration. Are they going to be able to make it to the end if they don't pit? Um, no, it's it's an interesting one. I mean, we we have we do have some prior knowledge going into this, so we, I, I like to say the racing soft. There is a possibility you can take them to the end, but that six laps there, that really refers to the operating window. Once they switch off, you're about two seconds a lap slower than a fresh set, and even slower than racing mediums, uh, older racing mediums, which will last a bit longer. So, um, you know, it can be done. Will it be done again? We'll have to wait and see. Certainly will do. You can see that the racing medium tyre, 1.2 seconds slower on average. You can see a pit stop will take you 12 seconds plus your tyre change time. That's about 14 seconds in total. So it is going to be very crucial to see how these drivers will be getting on. With that said, though, let's get ready and head over to the Autopolis track for the start of the Nations Cup race. And to the grid then, and here are the drivers all lined up, ready to go for the Nations Cup North America region race in the top 16 superstars. It's round eight, just to remind you of our 2019 season. This is going to be very, very exciting indeed. Turismo Defson, the Canadian driver, leads the field over the line to start the race then here at the Autopolis circuit, down towards the first corner. Are they all going to be making any moves? Are they going to be keeping themselves fairly clean? You'd like to think that they're going to be keeping their nose pretty clean as they come down towards that first corner and not trying to jeopardise anything in their race. Turismo Defson does indeed manage to continue leading the way. FT Ant, Carl Lamb, Turismo Leicester all maintaining position. In fact, everybody maintaining position. No real moves being made there. This first lap being a little bit quiet here at the Autopolis circuit so far, but it's all set to change in the mid-stages of the race. We ride on board, though, with Turismo Leicester. He is the... Uh, bottom half of the bread in this Canadian sandwich, at the, or this American sandwich I should say at the moment really, you can see Turismo Leicester there, fourth position he is in Turismo Defson just leading the way but Turismo Defson 
nearly looking like he was going off there. I think he's going to be uh, oh, he's having some connection issues up front. Yeah, well, aside from that, a strong start there for Turismo Destin. He's already nearly pulled a second over FT Ant, who qualified second just behind him in qualifying. Here is on board there when that's we go, uh, go downhill for the first time. Behind us, about four tenths behind, is Trismo Geordi, then Gumble CGT, and there is Trismo Geordi. Now coming down the bottom of the circuit, now we climb back up through the uh, difficult middle sector. And unless they're a little bit slow through there, Geordi closes up to the back. Not really many places you can overtake round this circuit as Geordi gets it all kind of sideways, I think really pushing a little bit too hard. Then we go back down the field to that very interesting livery uh, NSX there in the uh, bright orange orange and green. Uh, I think uh, that's something I'd run, I think, because that's how interesting it is. Coming around this long right hand, and now this is where dirty air comes into play in these cars. Very hard to get close to someone in front, but if you can, you find yourself in this, in this position where Road Beef is right up onto the rear spoiler, pulls to the left of the GTR, and now should have the run down to T1, but he is on the outside, so it's not going to be uh, just quite that easy, and one, well, Windfire, sorry, gets in the brakes nice and early. Ooh and uh, gets that done and sorted out, and Road Beef has to wait again, even with a little bit of contact there. Yeah, absolutely. Got a little bit too close for comfort down towards that first corner, didn't it? These drivers, of course, very much skilled, but it is just a little bit easy sometimes to push yourself a bit too far over the limit. I tell you, the thing that was so impressive for me was just the drive that Road Beef was able to get coming out of that final corner. That Nissan um, GTR didn't stand a chance, really, against the drive. If it wasn't for his tactical positioning down towards that first corner, you can guarantee that position could and probably would have been lost, but great defensive drive driving from Turismo Windfire. We cross back to Turismo Jordi here, who has lost a position then. Turismo Leicester is on the attack. You can see they're in fourth position. In fact, no, Turismo Jordi was uh, qualified fifth, rather, so he is still in fifth position, trying to find his way now ahead of his fellow Turismo teammate of Leicester. Down towards the bottom end of the circuit, we go into this right hand. You can carry a lot more speed in here than it looks. It looks like it's a very tight corner, but it is, in fact, relatively open. You can carry a good amount of corner speed going in through there. And look at the gap that's already been created at the front there, Jimmy, as well. Turismo Defson has pulled out nearly 1.6 seconds in these first couple of laps. Yeah, I was about to point that out. He's just really having, he's enjoying leading from the front. He's having to uh, worry of any dirty air or anything like that. He can just drive his own race. He's doing a very good job of it so far. That means it's up to FT Ant really to start to uh, start putting on the pressure himself, start maybe upping the pace somewhat. Uh, now, every driver has opted to start on the soft compound of tyre. So uh, what we saw uh, in the European race is some drivers were coming about halfway through, go for the one stop and just uh, have a fast tyre throughout. But we also saw some drivers uh, just not stop at all. And I have to say, when you're uh, trying to do 11 laps on one of these tyres with tyre wear at nine times the usual uh, usual consumption, I should say, really, it's uh, it's very tricky. The car essentially uh, becomes like it's driving an ice towards the end. So uh, we'll see what these guys have up their sleeves, if anything. And there is our leader, Tri uh, Trismo Deathson, sorry. Nearly two seconds now, just, just looking uh, nice and cool out there, isn't he? No, no pressure whatsoever. Yeah, seems to be enjoying himself, doesn't he? It looks like a bit of a Sunday drive, really, for Turismo Leicester at this stage. And all the while, he's looking so calm and confident. He's able to be setting fastest laps after fastest laps. Still very early stages, though, in this race, in these Group 2 machines. We know how tricky they can be. We know how hard they can bite as well. And let's not forget, of course, we're going to be coming into really what is going to be the uh, last half of the operating window there now. We're on lap three. Lap six is really where that cutoff point begins for these racing soft tyres and where drivers will begin to think about pitting. Will we see drivers perhaps trying to go the, to the end of the race? Well, they'll be very clapped out, those tyres on the car. So, And, of course, that pace will be a lot slower. So it does make things very interesting to see what will happen. Turismo Defson at the moment, he's not going to be thinking about that. He's just thinking about increasing that gap to the drivers behind. And he's doing an absolutely brilliant job of it as well. You can see minimal inputs on the steering wheel, nice and smooth. He's able to keep himself on the straight and narrow, keep himself uh, in a good position to continue setting those faster laps than his competitors. And even last time around, it wasn't the fastest lap overall, but it was still nearly half a second quicker than FT Ant in second position. Yeah, tyres will go off as we go through the race, but oh, meanwhile, but originals there, that was, uh, I, I've done that so many times, you just try and take that little bit more room on the outside, use all the track, and you just get one wheel on the grass, you hit the brakes, the car rotates. Luckily, he gathered it back up and didn't uh, go through a full 180 degree spin, which you don't want to be doing at all, but now he's lost a little bit of time to the cars in front. In front, that's Gumball, so that's, uh, uh, sixth place in front and just behind now you can see the wind fire has used the opportunity to get right up to the back of the NSX wind fire 
one of the few guys to drive in the GTR around here. The NSX seems to be the car of choice for the majority of the field, but uh, GTR still being wrecked by Windfly. Good to see, of course. We like to see uh, uh, variation when we can, the varieties of Spice of Life and all that. And interestingly enough, Gumball in front has picked up a penalty, 0.5 seconds. He'll serve that coming down the hill here. That's where the penalty uh, is, uh, the penalty uh, serving zone is. I'm actually, I think he might have it for next lap now. Um, but regardless, next time he serves that, he's going to just be passed by anyone that's anywhere near him. But he basically uses, loses half a second of acceleration, which in these cars is a lot. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to be noticing that. You can see him there trying to drive very defensively as well. He's trying to defend from Originals 14, hugging every curb like his favourite granny at the moment as he tries to keep it on the straight and narrow, tries to not get overtaken by Turismo Windfire, who is looking very competitive and very aggressive, it's got to be said, in these uh, mid-stages of the race as well. He really wants to find his way past the Honda NSX does the Nissan GTR driver. Nissan, of course, very much in a minority as Carl Lamb comes into the pit lane. Original oh. 14 also into the pit box as well. So new set of boots, soft tyres these drivers are opting for. You can see Gumball GTC there with that penalty, that red dot on the left of his name indicates that he does have a penalty. Here is Originals, though, in the pits. New set of boots on his car and he'll be getting ready to go out onto the track once again to resume racing. Comes out nearly stone dead last there as well so he's got a lot of work to be doing but of course other drivers around him haven't pitted that's very early to be blinking actually at the end of lap number five he must not have liked the tyre he was on which is fair enough it's good to come in and also like reset your head almost when you come in like new tyres okay go out and just concentrate now he clouded the pit wall on the way in as well that would have cost him a, a, probably about a second or so you can't just do that in GT you, you do get punished for it so uh, that's also going to not help his campaign. Meanwhile, we go back to the front of uh, the field and Death Sun still just more and more uh, increasing the gap up to 2.6 seconds now. So just over two and a half seconds over FT and to in turn is over three seconds ahead of Turismo Lesson. So the, the front of the field is spreading out a little bit now and people get into their groove. It's really the midfield battle where the cars are closest. But as we said at the start, it's very hard to pass around here, especially in these cars, especially these downforce cars. There are lots of, medi lots of medium speed corners here and that's where the downfall starts to work and you can't really follow someone that closely because of the dirty air in front and it, it does make passing very tricky. Certainly does. Here comes Turismo Def Sun then. The race leader blinks. He comes into the pit lane, also clouts the pit wall on the way in. He goes from soft to soft compound tyres. He'll put some more fuel in his car to ensure he can get to the end. His fellow Turismo teammate, Turismo Leicester, also in the box there as well. Lots of drivers now blinking. So the race leader blinks and everybody else decides to follow suit. Mostly this is the time uh, best for the, the, the tyre change. It's better to try and get a bit of trap position too. Always go for the undercut. Anyone who stayed out a bit longer is going to suffer now on the slower tyre. So I think that's what uh, we saw Originals try and do, which is get an undercut on some of the drivers. So it's worked out OK for Originals. It's now seventh, but our, our once leader is now down in the fourth position. But he is the, uh, the first runner of those who have stopped. You can see... Uh, just to the right there of a tyre compound next to the name in the top left, you can see a number in the, the box under P. That basically just means how many stops they've made so far, so you can keep a track of who's where, and you can see who still owes a stop. Yeah, the top three drivers, as you said there, Jimmy, haven't pitted, and you can see how much Turismo Devsun was already beginning to close up onto the back of uh, Mr. Stinkybug there. So uh, Mr. Stinkybug, of course, was running in the lower half of the top ten before those pit stops took place. FT Ant, though, is the race leader at the moment, followed by Turismo Windfire. Will Windfire be going for a bit of an overcut? It'll be interesting to see whether that's a strategy that will pay off. It's not something we've seen work so far here in the top 16 superstars. You can see Stinkybug there is now being passed and has now been passed by Turismo Def Sun. So the Canadian back onto the podium, back up into contention for this race. And when the other drivers in front of him, in theory, pit, he will be in the race lead once more. There is the Canadian in the Honda NSX machine through the left-hander and then following into that never-ending right-hander through here as well. Now this is crucial, really. He needs to be getting those faster lap times in at the end of uh, this first lap out of the pits. He needs to have a good outlap, a very strong outlap, and uh, ensure that he will be in contention for that race victory. Meanwhile, Mr. Stinky Bug pits, so from fourth position, he'll be tumbling down the timing sheets. He goes a little bit later than everybody else around him, really. It's going to cost him a bit of time because all the other drivers have gotten back up to speed. They've got temperature in their tyres. They've been able to set those fast sector times and close that gap up. And uh, well, Mr. Stinky Bug, you can see there, emerges out onto the track quite far down the order in 15th position at the end of this one. It didn't quite work out for him, that strategy, so it's all to do now on track. Uh, 
right now someone who has more to do is FT Antony. Just to give you a comparison of lap times, at the start of this race, the fastest lap we've seen so far is a 34-0. That was by Drismo Defsun. And now FT Ant, who's out there struggling on these worn soft tyres, is now doing 37. So 137.3 was the last lap um, for FT Ant now. It's a bit late, I think, for him to come in for a, a fresh set of tyres. So do you think we're going to see him try and stretch these and go to the end? Because we've seen people try that before. It can work, but you have to be able to to drive the car in this state and it's it's no, it's nothing short of a challenge. Yeah, absolutely right. When you've got a car that's understeering and oversteering like anybody's business, it's uh, really a very, very tricky car to handle. You can see FTN there getting out of shape coming into that penultimate corner, but yet he continues onwards. The start, lap eight, still in the race lead, still with a consistent gap to Turismo Windfire there in second place, but all the while Turismo Defsun is still closing that gap down. The deficit of lap times, the difference in lap times, is very, very bold indeed. Four seconds a lap is what Turismo Defsun is faster than his fellow competitors around him. So we ride on board now with the uh, Raybrick NSX driver, and he's just closing that gap down, keeping himself nice and calm, nice and composed. He knows that this race victory is very much a possibility for him, but he just needs to keep himself on the road, keep it calm, keep setting those lap times and also keep closing up to the drivers in front of him as well. Well, the thing is, all he has to do now, Tom, is just catch them. We, we've seen in other races, the tyre difference is so much that Def Sun can essentially just drive around these two guys. Now, he has to get past both... Uh, he has to get both uh, sorry, try that again. Has to get past both Windfire and Ants now, of course, to get up uh, back into the lead. Windfire is now just in front of him on track. Last lap, uh, Def Sun was just over three seconds quicker than Windfire. You can see him just reeling him in now. Windfire there in that GTR's done well to keep it out of the pit so far on this soft compound and tyre. Must feel awful to drive that thing right here. Now looking back, look how quickly Death Sun's closing in. Every corner, every corner's a tenth or two. And look how close now that NSX is. Now it's just going to be a matter of, uh, of finding a way through now as Death Sun is right up behind. He might even try going around the outside of this long left-hander. That's a right-hand, so that's how much grip he's got. Look at him. Look at now he can reach out and touch that wing if he wanted to. But what we'll probably do is the sensible thing is wait for the straight, get into the draft, slipstream by, and then go after FD Ant. Yeah, he's all over the back of him like a bad rash at the moment. He's running side by side. He pulls to the outside, down towards the first corner, and he takes second position like candy from a baby. Turismo Windfire, they're not really putting up much competition I think either. I think he lifted there, Tom. He, he was like, okay, I'm not keeping this. I'm going to just let him go. And to be fair to Windfire, he's now got six seconds between him and the next guy on track, which is Carl Lamb. So he may be able to keep that and end up on a podium. We'll see. What we wouldn't be looking for now is these uh, basically the, the comparison of that time between those who have stopped and those who haven't. So Carl Lamb and Theresa Lester are both guys to watch at the moment. Here is our leader, and I, I, I feel like he's not going to be our leader for very long because look. Look in the background there. There is Def Sun coming up behind very, very quickly. And I, I, it'll only be a matter of time, I think, Tom, before Ant is overtaken and Def Sun will take his lead back. Yeah, we only had to look at the last lap, really, and see how much he was able to close up there Turismo Def Sun. And look at that as well. Just the drive he's able to get out of the corners, how much later he's able to break into the corners. And, of course, the corner speed he's able to carry through those corners as well. He's just superior in every single way possible. Nothing that FT and is surely going to be able to do. He's trying to defend. He's trying to hold on to those inside lines, but he's going to run it a little oh. bit wide, and that is going to allow Turismo Defsun to go through. Was there a little bit of contact there? I think there might have been. Turismo Defsun could be under investigation from the stewards after that one, but he does take the lead away from FT and going through into that final sector. So perhaps a little bit more forceful than he had planned. It was inevitability that he was going to get past anyway, really. So maybe he should have been a little bit more patient in finding his way through. Yeah, that was just kind of needless. Um, there was no no point uh, being so impatient there. It would be very easy just to pass on a straight. I mean, there's been no penalty given to Def Sun, so he kind of got away with it. Uh, but the contact didn't need to happen there. I, th I think I don't think it was on purpose. I think what happened there is Def Sun was just caught out about how uh, how much FT Ant was struggling uh, on those tyres there. It's very easy to do when your car is so much faster than the guy in front. But, uh, yeah, I think he could have just waited there. But it doesn't matter. Uh, Def Sun retakes the lead as we thought he would. He now already has a two-second gap. And FT Ant, I think, is really very much struggling. In fact, his lap time was a second and a half slower than Turismo Windfire behind him. 
who has also not stopped the tyres. So I think now we're, we're on for a battle for second place. But can Carl Lamb catch them? Carl Lamb hasn't, uh, has taken tyres. He's about two seconds that faster than them back in fourth position. So uh, the podium is still very much uh, up in the air at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Laura looking at Carl Lamb here then into the uh, left hander, into that hairpin, the very prime overtaking opportunity. No moves being made. You can see how close they are in the midfield further back there with uh, Originals leading Geordie, leading Gumball, GTC. Those guys separated by just a few tenths of a second each. Very close racing in the uh, midfield one here. And this is actually going to be a really good race for Turismo Leicester. As we said earlier on, he's just inside the top ten in the championship standings going into this one. He missed that first round, so he's trying to make up ground. Meanwhile, his fellow Turismo teammate, Turismo Windfire, is now trying to find his way through on FT Ant in the final stages of this one. So Turismo Windfire and that Nissan GTR having used their tyres to the absolute maximum seems to have just kept a bit more tyre life in them and onto this final lap that is going to be very, very crucial indeed. Side by side they come down towards the outside. Can he hold on to the line, Turismo Windfire? He certainly can. Can he take the apex? He certainly can. And can he take the position? Well, the answer, yes, of course, is that he certainly can. He is up into second place here on the final lap in round eight of the Nations Cup for the North America's region. Through. Oh, very, very close. A little bit wide there for FT Ant as well, trying to defend. He's in that dirty air now as well. But now look, Tom, Carl Lam and uh, Turismo Leicester, who are having their own little scrap as well, are both catching uh, Windfire and Ant in front. So these guys can just keep it together and not squabble too much. They should be able to overhaul Ant and, and might even catch Windfire as well. And these guys have taken tyres, so they're going to be so much faster than the cars in front. There is Leicester. They're getting all kinds of sideways coming out of the fast left-hander. Carl Lam in front. Coming up now to the far of the, the the hairpin. Keep it nice and tight through here. Don't go too wide. The corner does fall away from you. Look how close now Carl Am is to FD Ant. Now all Ant can do now is just sit on every apex and hope the guy behind cannot find a way through. Ant's tyres are shot at this point. You can see that Lamb's having to lift just to try and stay behind him and not run into the back of him. This one is going to go right down to the wire. Surely it's only going to be a matter of time. Can he find his way through? There's oh. contact, and FTN goes off. He closed the door right at the last minute. Carl Lamb is given a penalty, and I would say quite rightfully so as well. That was an unnecessary move there that he made. No such dramas, though, for Turismo Defson. He takes victory in the Nations Cup for the North America's region. It's a Turismo 1-2 with Turismo Windfire in the Nissan GTR claiming a podium in second place, and Turismo Leicester makes it a Turismo 1-2-3 right at the very end of that one as well. Two Canadians on the podium originals comes home in fourth place gumball gtc in fifth and carl lamb with that five second penalty does claim sixth position right at the very end of that one jimmy what's your thoughts on that last lap drama uh very disappointing there from carl lamb that was incredibly unnecessary i understand you're, you're feeling a little bit uh you want to try and get through it to the last lap, but you can't just shovel someone off the circuit. And in the end, even though Carl Lamb did get a penalty, FD Ant is the one that suffered, uh, finishing behind him in the end. So we don't like to see that, and uh, rightly so, punished straight away. But that takes, of course, nothing away from this man at the front. Turismo Defson, dominant at pretty much every corner around here, almost winning by a full 10 seconds, which at this level is absolutely amazing. Yeah, absolutely brilliant stuff. Turismo Defson, a dominant performance from him. Turismo Windfire there in second, and Turismo Leicester claiming the final podium position. Brilliant, brilliant stuff. Further down the order there as well, of course, that five-second penalty for Carl Lamb, demoting him to sixth place after the chequered flag. You can see just inside the top ten there, Rory True just in front of him was V Gearhead there. Quiet races for Hendricks, Row Beef, Mr. Stinky Bug, well, we saw him in the podium positions earlier on, but uh, sadly it wasn't a positive end for the race there. Calm in 14th, Bill Barder in 15th, and then the other drivers completing the 16th. Uh, finishes in that race for the top 16 superstars for the Nations Cup. Well, what does that mean for the standings, I hear you ask? Well, here is the answer. Turismo Defson now leads the way by a very commanding margin. You can see there he has a very, very significant lead of nearly 400 points over Carl Lamb in second position. However, it is quite close between Carl Lamb, Turismo Windfire and FT Geordie, as well as FT Ant there, Jimmy. Four drivers all in within uh, about 40 points of one another between second and fifth. Yeah, both Geordie and Ant didn't improve that time around, so that gap will still stay at one point. Another notable driver improvement will be Turismo Leicester down in eighth position. He got a decent result this time around, meaning that he moves up into eighth position, only a couple of points off his countrymen in seventh. Yeah, very impressive. Outside of the uh, top ten, you can see there CNFR GTR. We didn't see him, of course, haven't seen him for quite a few rounds, actually, so he goes slipping down 
down the order. Originals 14 and TRC Stagger now inside the top 10 there as well. Gumball uh, CGT in 13th position there. Pretty close, a little bit further down. Quite a few drivers who are fighting for position and they'll want to be wanting to have a very, very positive time next time out. Speaking of next time out, actually, the uh, Nations Cup for the top 16 superstars takes place on the 25th of May for the FIA certified Gran Turismo Championships. It is going to be an absolute cracker. Whatever you do, don't miss it.